Hey everybody, welcome to Edit Along With Me in Capture One, where I edit one photo, and I use that as an opportunity to explore some of the tools at your disposal when you are working with Capture One. And hopefully over the course of watching a couple edits, you'll see some tools emerge and see ways of using them and ways of expanding your own workflow. So today is really going to be about setting up your tools and tool tabs and how we adjust that and how we take a look at it and ways of making that structure inside of Capture One something that feels really comfortable to you because this is totally customizable. Uh, and then we're gonna do a basic edit of this photo right here. Uh, so we're taking a look at the tool tabs and yours might actually look more like this where they have uh, a, an image or like a little icon and the name of the tool tab. So for instance, library, tether, adjust, color, refine. And the first thing we wanna look at is that some of these are defaulted out of the box and that has a little bit of a holdover from the history of Capture One. So Capture One, for a very long time, was really only thought about, designed, and marketed towards working professionals. And there are a number of things inherent in the design of Capture One which really lend themselves to this heritage. The first one of these that you'll probably notice is that the tether tool is usually right there. It's very prominent. And if you tether for a decent amount of your shooting, this is an invaluable tool. It works really well. And one day I might do a video about tethering, but for a lot of people, this is just not a relevant tool tab for them. And so one thing we wanna be able to do is add and remove tool tabs from our workspace. We might want these in a different order, and we might wanna have different tools inside of the tool tab so that we can create a workflow that is customized to us. And that's really kind of what we're gonna be looking at. Uh, so let's start with moving the tool tabs around. So if I highlight over one, it tells me how to click and drag to reorder. So use usually the command button, hold that, click, drag, and I can move the tool tabs into whatever order I would like. Now, I don't tether off of this machine and this workspace ever. And so as a result, I really don't need it. And a lot of people don't. So I can come to that tool tab, right click on it. And now I get some options, add a tool, which we're gonna look at in a minute and remove tether tab. So this is called the tethering tab. And if I click on that, it just removes it, double checks that I want to do that. And then when I click there, it is gone, which is great. So if I come to these three dots uh, at the side of the names of my tool tabs, the tool tab selection, I have some options. I can add a tool tab. Now I just removed tether, so it's now an option to add back in. So is something called style, which adds in these styles, either ones that you can uh, add to Capture One or pre-made ones and have a tab that deals with those, or you can create a custom tool tab with whatever tools you want in whatever order you want. So if I wanted to add tethering back in, I certainly could do so. Now we don't see it right now. What's the reason for that? Well, the reason is when you use the text and icon viewing option, it takes up more real estate. I've actually grabbed this panel and dragged it out to make it a little bit larger, but still with all of the tool tabs at my disposal, they don't all fit. So if I click on these three arrows, I can see the tool tabs that I actually have that don't fit. And the last one is tethering right there. Now, if I click on these three buttons, these three little dots, I can go to icon only, and that will show me all of these and it takes up much less real estate. So there's my tethering tool tab again. And of course I can remove it like I did before. So now we know how to add them, remove them and reorder them, but we should be able to add in tools into a tool tab as we desire. So if I come to my library tool tab, you'll see that I really only have two things in here, library and filters. Now library is where we actually find the collection or smart collection that we want uh, to be able to use to find our images. 
We also have folders where we can find images that are located in specific places. And it's also where we're able to grab images and relocate them on our machine, which is a conversation for another video. So I'm gonna find a user collection. And right now I'm inside of my macro collection of workshops that I do. And then inside of here I have filtering. Now filtering is where I can limit the number of images that I find. So the total number of images inside of my macro uh, smart collection is quite a number, well over 2000. So what I've done with filtering is I've decided to only look at the top ones, the ones that are rated five stars. And this is why I recommend rating all of your images if you can at all help it. So we're looking at 301 images because this is the filtered selection. All right, now that's all well and good, but what if I wanted additional things inside of here? Well, I could do that. I could right click on the icon of the tool tab and I get add tool or remove from uh, remove the tool tab from the selection. So I'm gonna to go to add tool and here I can find all of the different tools that I would be able to add to any tool tab I want. Let's go ahead and add some ones that are pretty normal to have inside of here, which would be the keyword library. And let's go ahead and add keywording. So come around here and add keywords. Now those are now not in the order I would really want. I'd rather have keywords first. So I can just click and drag a tool and move it to wherever I want. By the way, another nice thing, and I do this with my histogram tool a lot, if you click and drag out, you pull it onto the frame where you can make it larger, and that allows you to have this immediately at your disposal, and you can do this with any of the tools you want. Okay, so keywording, keyword library, these are nice things to have here. And I'll do a whole video about keywording at another point, but it's really powerful stuff. All right, the last thing to think about is the non-scrollable area. So if I collapse all of these inside of my adjustments tool tab, you're gonna see a black bar right there. Now that black bar is the non-scrolling area. So let's say that I have my histogram and I always wanna have my histogram viewable as I'm editing, as I oftentimes do. But then I have a lot of these opened up. So let's go ahead and open up a lot of my tools so that they take up a lot of space and I have to scroll to get to all of them. Notice that I have layers and histogram above the black bar so that as I scroll, those never leave my viewable area. And that's a way of making sure I can always come back to an important thing, no matter where I am inside of my tools while I'm working. The non-scrollable area is something that things can be added to or taken away from. So if I took histogram out, I could move it in underneath that area. And now the histogram would be part of the scrolling area. I like for my histogram and layers to be in a non-scrollable area, both in my exposure and inside of color, you'll notice. So I have them in a different order, so we can just rearrange that. I like to have layers in both exposure and color, so that when I'm doing color work, I can still go back and forth between layers, and I'm all right. So now I have some control over exactly what I want. And I like for these to be in the order of editing. So for me, exposure, then color, and then finite adjustment is the order that I do things in. So you'll notice I have exposure, color, and then I have what's called my refine tab. And my metadata tab is there. I use that for a lot of stuff when I'm teaching workshops. And then here is gonna be the shape tab, which also has things like purple fringing and lens correction. And I think that it would make more sense for this to be right about there. And my export tool tab is right here, which has a whole lot of choices on my recipes and where things are brought to, as you can see. 
Now here I've moved my quick tool tab. You might want to have this closer to the front. The idea behind the quick tool tab is to have just a few things where if you did just these edits, you'd have a pretty complete edit. And that's what we're going to do right now with this image and the edit that we're going to do today. I'm gonna to bring my histogram down, which is great. And it tells me the exposure data there and where most of the pixels are located. Base characteristics is something I consider essential because I think it's always important to use an ICC profile that you made for your camera. And that's usually done with something called a color checker passport, something I've talked about in another video. Styles and presets are just a fast edit. So I can come to my custom styles and I have some stuff that I've done before. So uh, in an enhance, just a basic brightness and white balance adjustment. But I also have some built-in ones, which might be a lot of fun. So black and whites are inside of here. And we might do one of those just as a fast edit, but I don't think we're going to do so today. Now this is in the wrong order. White balance is before exposure. I don't like that. I like white balance to be after exposure control. So here, I might bring up the exposure itself. And notice how that shifts my histogram. But then what I might want to do is take my contrast and push that a little bit. And do I like my saturation? Well, I might push that a little bit as well. Come to high dynamic range. I'll take my highlights down a little bit because I felt like I was losing some right there. Take my black point down. And another thing that I can do is take my shadow area and I wonder if darkening that would darken the background more than the subject. Right? And it looks like it is a little bit. Now we're gonna try to do something to make that flower stand out, but we're gonna try and do it without layers and masking because this is a, uh, a kind of essentials edit discussion today. Now let's get into color. White balance is here and we could take a look to see is this a little bit too warm? Is it a little bit too cool? And I actually think that white balance itself is pretty close on this image. I'm pretty happy. But one thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to add in something that's powerful. So the color editor is inside of my full color control, but I wanna add it into my quick adjustments. I'm gonna add a tool, all right? Come in here and come to my color editor. Let's add it there. Because what I'd like to do is I would like to come in to advanced, my dropper, pick these shades right here, and I'd like to add lightness to those, which will brighten those up. After doing that, I can come to my greens and I can darken those. And that's gonna push my flower forward by a little bit. And if I wanted to do just a basic edit, that might be completely sufficient. In other videos, of course, we're gonna take a look at layering and masking so that we can really separate out the flower and make it stand out a little bit more, or perhaps do some other controls. But for a basic edit, that's not bad. And that would be just inside of that quick tool. So that right there, I'm gonna drag it back just for my own sake, is how I like to take a look at setting up my tools and my tool tabs when I'm getting started in editing. If I come to before and after, I'll be able to see how what I did affected the total image. If you like the way that you have set up all of your tools here, one thing that you'll want to do is save that as a workspace. So what I'm going to do is come up to Window, Workspace, and I can save this workspace as the workspace called, let's say, Test. Once I hit Save, I can take a look at my workspaces, and now I have several. The one that we started with, I have one called Lightroom Mimic, which moves the tools into the positions they are for that uh, most matches Lightroom and Test. If I come to my Lightroom Mimic workspace, it's gonna move the tools to a different location, and I have different tool tabs that I created in order to uh, adjust the things at my disposal. But if I wanted to come back, window, workspace, to what we were just working with, I could do so. And in this way, you could have different workspaces with different tools at your disposal, depending on the work that you are doing. 
All right, so this has been uh, a basic edit for us today and the tools that we really looked at. We're setting up the way that tools and tool tabs uh, look for you and your workspace so that you can get the edit you want. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.